Hi everyone, it is Emma here from Queensland and welcome to the Sea Saber Experience Forum. Today we have our good friend and guest educator for Joico, Craig Argent at Pony Hair in Noosa and he's going to do his punk rock chameleon haircut for us. So I'm about to spin it around and let's get started. Hey everyone, how you going? I'm Craig, welcome to my shop. Um, based here in Noosa. Um, today I'm just going to cut straight into it. Uh, we're going to go in to do a, uh, a fun little variation of a pixie. It's a little bit of a, a punk rock version of this. Um, my inspirations are early Linda Evangelista um, and then the modern take on that has been pink. Uh, so we're going to do a nice little sort of cut between the two. Um, the reason why I'm sort of bringing this haircut in is it's a haircut that I do a lot on clients that are in that sort of 35 plus age bracket. So um, it's allowing them to have some really nice fun styles, allowing them to uh, be edgy, um, but without being too, too over the top. Um, so before I sort of get going with this too much, um, I'm just gonna run through really quickly on what tools I'm gonna use today. Um, so, Primarily I will work with a traditional straight blade scissor. Um, ideally it's just literally for all my solid cutting. I'll then actually work with my sliding scissors, which will allow me to be able to get a little bit of texture into the hair, um, which uh, obviously is a big part of this particular haircut. And then I'll also work with a classic tapering scissor. Um, a lot of people confuse these with being thin scissors, but they are a tapering scissor. So when I'm actually utilising these uh, to, to blend my graduation uh, into my interior, um, I'll actually work through a scissor over comb technique, which once again I'll explain uh, a little bit more about these scissors at that time. Um, when it comes to the combs that I use, um, I don't go generally into combs that have a wide end and a fine end. Um, I like the hair to have a lot of natural movement. Um, I like to be in control of the hair to the point where I'm not over manipulating. So I like to actually use, we've all seen these, the old combs that come with your clippers. Um, a lot of the time when you get thrown, they get thrown out or they end up in the back room. Um, I use them for the handle, I'm a bit lazy. Um, but it allows me to comb through the hair quite comfortably and I'm not over manipulating or stretching the hair. So, this is Mel, my model, and uh, <laughs> So what we're gonna do with Mel and the way we sort of approach this particular haircut is that um, we work through quite a fine graduation. Um, and what I mean by fine graduation, quite fine sections um, that actually allow us to have quite a uh, accurate or quite a particular haircut. Um, keeps the shape very feminine, keeps it very nice and tight. I will pretty much follow the crest line in sectioning out the interior from the exterior. So let's just sort of roll through the graduation. I'll do that quite slowly and try and sort of change sides so you can actually clearly see how we're working. It will be a mobile guideline the whole way through. Um, then from there, when we then start to connect into the interior, um, we'll, we'll come back through and I'll discuss that a little bit tighter as we get closer to that. Um, as far as hairlines and so forth, I'll try to up as, as we're going. So, all right, we're ready to go. Here we go. Here we go. So at this point here, straight blade scissor. I will go through and actually just section out my interior. As we can see, I've got great hair to work with here. Um, has been recently bleached. Not necessarily with an inch of its life, but very, very close. So it does make the hair quite manageable um, and quite easy to sort of to work with. So I'll roll this into a teeny little bit of a rounded V into the back area. As you can sort of see here, I'm not actually using clips at this point in time because of the length of the hair. It's just allowing me to quite easily just sort of comb it out of place. If I was going for quite a stronger uh, disconnect, then I would actually probably clear this right out of the way, the top section is a lot heavier. So the way I'm actually sort of finding my line, I'm probably just a teeny bit of above the crest line to be honest. So I'm actually really probably working this just back off the corner of the recession points.
key thing that when we're working with our graduation is to work with balance. Keeping the balance uh, in line with the chin line, so we're working on a 45. But doing that, it allows the side profile to be completely balanced, keeps the form and the shape in place. Um, so this can be dressed up or it can be dressed down. Uh, we'll have a little bit of manipulation with this. A lot of it will be open dried up today. Um, just have a little bit of fun and for the exaggeration of what we're actually after. Uh, the length that will be in the fringe, it will be a variation coming into the fringe line. So um, sort of increasing into, like I said, the variation component of the front, which will allow us to be able to sweep across the face if we want to at any point in time, giving you mobility with dragging your fringe to exaggerate off to our side. So if we want it a little bit smoother, a little bit lower, flatter and so forth, we can do that. Uh, but will also allow us to open it up, which is what we'll play with today. So first section will be straight through the middle at the back. We are already working with quite a tapered length in the back, so I will probably just soften that out with the texture as we get to it. So at the moment, we will start with our first guideline. This guideline, as I said before, will be a mobile guideline that we will actually then trace through for the entire graduation. I'm lucky in the sense, I suppose, being a male, that um, my fingers are actually, the thickness of my fingers actually almost work perfectly to almost like a level four blade on the clipper. So I bring that in quite tight. So literally the back of my knuckles are really tight against the client's head, which allow me to get a really nice, even, graduated length. Obviously, ladies that have finer fingers, uh, you'll actually find that obviously you'll probably sit at a slightly closer point, so you may need to actually just give a little bit of drag as you come. Well. Maintaining the 45 degree angle to work away so we keep our form and shape and balance. Okay. As I work down towards the headline, I'm literally running until I run out of hand. You can already start to see how that shape is really coming in quite nice and tight. So each new section, I'm actually picking up the previously cut section, which gives you oh my guide. As you know, when we do work with hair that has been bleached and has actually had that uh, settlement time to actually calm down the cuticle settles down, we get that teeny bit of a regrowth. We're probably looking at a couple of weeks old here, uh, probably two to three weeks. Um, you tend to find that uh, the hair becomes really pliable and uh, a lot of fun to work with. Unfortunately, you might be able to see in the background that our beautiful Nusa weather is not as beautiful today. So, a little bit bleak. Sunshine Coast isn't very sunny today. No, no. I think we've done that on purpose though, so we don't attract any southern people who want to move up here. So, we've spoken to the weather people to um, turn off the good weather so we're not doing a Nusa ad. I 
Okay, so we have a question for you, Craig. Oh. Can you explain why you prefer the clipper comb for your graduation again? Um, reason being is it allows me to keep the hair in natural form, so I'm not actually over uh, stretching the hair. Um, from going in with a fine tooth comb, I can actually be putting a lot more unnecessary texture and attention um, onto the section, which ultimately then when that recoils back in, will actually give you little lumps and bumps through your graduation. Um, so primarily what it's doing is it's uh, allowing the hair to still stay in its, in its true form, um, and I'm not coming back through and losing time and trying to get rid of little bumps where the elasticity with the finer tooth comb is putting too much tension so you're overstretching the hair and then when it recoils so you end up with little sort of uh, vertical bumps going on. So, great question though. I did do actually a hair show several years ago in, uh, in Brisbane and I had a, a young assistant helping me <laughs> and she actually wanted to she actually asked Duncan, um, you know, should I get, uh, get Craig a proper comb? So I think she thought that I'd left my comb at home and was just using this one because it was all I could get my hands on. So, so we're just starting to dry a little bit, so we are getting a little bit of pop in that section. But as you can see, we're nice and tight, quite easy. I will just sort of run over the front of the ear here so you can actually just sort of see how the line tightens. With this particular shape, I always find myself bringing the trigger, which is the little piece of hair in front. So those of you of my vintage, this is the trigger section, temple recession point. So I always like to bring the trigger into just a teeny little bit of a V or a point. Then the ear, now there are two ways to sort of, three ways to sort of work around the ears. Ears sometimes can be really bendy for you. Uh, sometimes they can be very rigid and very hard. So one way is that you can actually pull the ear back if you're working in front of the ear. You can actually put your finger on the little shelf here and actually just drop the ear and it just moves it enough for you to be able to get comfortably in to move scissors around or if you're in the luxury to be able to bend the ear. Gauge the client's facial expressions as to whether they're comfortable with any of those options. So straight away, as soon as you get the outline cleaned up, you can just see how that just finishes up. It's really sharp, very clean. I'm just going to drop a little bit of water onto it. As you can see, just as I was popping the water on, I actually like to use the opposite hand just to actually act as a barrier or so forth, just to protect the client, so it's client comfort at all times. So we're going at the moment. I'll come through, we'll continue working through the other side, following the exact same step and process. Once I've finished that, I'll actually run the outline again. Uh, then I'll just come through and just do a little nice little soft blend to blend the first cut sections of graduation into the lower part of the hairline section. Once again, I'm going back to my original guideline. Craig, have you got any tips for up and coming hair cutters on how to perfect their graduation to make it so natural like you do? Um, I think the key thing for me, I was, I was very fortunate when I entered the industry that graduation was the haircut that was in at the time. We're doing a lot of graduated, um, very strong geometric haircuts, um, which is sort of in that mid to late 80s period. So um, a lot of what we were doing, the way we were taught to always work with graduation was to work vertically because the hair falls in a vertical direction. Um, can you come through and cut uh, graduation horizontally? Yes, you can. Um, you do find that, I find the hairdressers with a little bit more experience know how to come through and cross-check themselves, um, which is really, really important. 
I think the area where sometimes people get caught when they're doing it horizontally is maintaining that element of the, uh, the, sh the profile shape. So what tends to happen when you're cutting horizontally is you'll tend to follow the curve of the head, which then loses where you need to keep the balance and the weight. So whenever you're working regardless, we need to make sure that we keep good weight into the crown and the bottom of the crown area, uh, which allows you to keep that form. So uh, yeah. So that's my main reason. My rule of thumb is I very rarely will actually do any kind of horizontal graduation. I will come through and cross check horizontally, um, but all my basic in, uh, hair removal and cutting so forth is done in a, uh, a vertical format. Key thing to obviously do, I'm obviously very comfortable with sort of following through on a technique like this. Um, so I sort of trust this previous section that I've cut, um, but it's always handy when we sort of two to three sections and you're actually picking through just to bend the hair with a bee with your scissors and you can actually just be very quiet tightly there catch my guideline. I think sometimes too where people get in trouble with graduation is they take two bigger sections. Um, you take two bigger sections and you run into the issues once again of getting quite uh, a ribbed effect or quite a, a bouncy effect. So sort of get like peaks and troughs going through. So finer sections allow you to um, get a much tighter graduated line, which um, doesn't involve you having to come through and uh, personalize after the fact or try and remove it. Then have to double up. So when you're on the floor, it's paramount. I think most people generally will work to sort of 45 minute hour appointment times. Um, in my shop, we generally work to 45 minute appointment times for ladies' uh, haircuts. And um, so you do have to sort of move reasonably sort of quickly and quite precisely as you're doing the haircut. Because by the time you put a consultation in there, you put the shampoo component in there, um, put the drying component in. So Generally speaking, you will be working with a cutting period of probably about 15, maybe 20 minutes. So you do need to sort of move quickly, um, but at the same time, you do need to be quite precise in how you go about your sectioning. This is our little mascot of the shop, my little dog. This is Everybody, that's Cliff. That's his Cliff. <laughs> Cliff wanders through the shop, there you go, it's pretending <laughs> to, it's his model pose. So now coming back into working with the hairline, in this case here, I actually like to pop a finger onto the client's face just to give me a guide so that blade is then resting on my finger. Once again, just so it's comfortable for the client. I think we've all been in situations where you do have some hairdressers that will just sit there and they almost feel like they're trying to push the scissor blade into your skin. So, um, I was very fortunate to train under an Italian man who was very big on the etiquette for the client. Uh, you know, and it being a helpful experience for them. Now, as I work around the arch of the ear and come down towards the hairline at the back, I actually sort of stop probably about two thirds of the way down the ear. And the reason why I do that is to allow me then to be in a position if we need to, depending on what the hair growth is, to then come back in, once again, supporting the blade with my finger, to actually just come in and chip the hairline. So if we do want to have a little bit of softness there, then that's where that's sort of starting from. If we keep that up too high, what tends to happen is it gets in behind the ear, so if people wearing glasses and so forth, they can get quite scrappy quite quickly. So the haircut won't age as well. Um, it'll lose that perimeter line quite quickly, get quite puffy. You get little uh, flicks and so forth that'll come from glasses being on and off or being turned up and so forth. So, so we've run a graduation through. We've got the bulk of the hair, the general shape is coming in. I'm now just gonna come through and blend into the bottom part of the hairline. I'm actually quite liking with Mel's hair how she actually has a little bit of natural movement as you can sort of see coming from the left to right. Um, and that, as that sort of dries, gets this really nice little whip on it. So I actually work with that rather than fighting it. 
If you get in and fight it too much, um, you tend to find that you've actually got to really take it in super tight, so you come in and clip ring. Um, I don't want to do that today because once again, we will reveal a little bit of this darker regrowth and we'll be chasing a lot of blending of dark into blonde. So we're going to work with that today. So some parts here, I'll just come through and just double check whether or not, as you can see, I'm running out of hair. So this is going to have to be now something that we do with the texturizing scissors. Or tapering scissors. A lot of people in the industry will refer to these as thinning scissors. They are traditionally a barber scissor. Um, and the whole process of this is to literally work in the format of scissor over comb. So very lightly, just skimming ends. It's not about getting in too deep or too hard into the hair. And it just allows us to get a really super soft blend. Key thing when you are doing scissor over comb is to keep the comb moving and move away and out of the hair. I'm going a little slower than what I would normally do in a regular haircut. But we can see straight away how the bulk has just been taken out of this section and we now have this really beautiful sort of infinite blend. It's quite nice, quite seamless. And I'm sort of running away as I get into here, so I'm really skimming nothing off this section that I've cut because I don't need to get in and create a little scallop or a divot that I've got to work against. But we can see how easily now and how tight that comes in. It's lovely. Now the trick when we get into working around the ear area here is that we've got to watch once again moving around the ear. We've got open blades moving um, as well as getting quite a sizable comb in. Once again this is where people might feel more comfortable using a comb that's a little bit smaller. In my case here I'll actually only be doing the scissor over comb into and it's probably stopping it around this area. So to do that, I'm actually bending the ear forward and I'll just scoop through on a bit of a 45. And then I actually keep the, the butt of the comb stationary and roll the tip of the comb. So I actually work in that format. Less is more. I don't have to go too hard, too fast. That can be just a general rule of life. So as we can see there now, that's just taking that little bit of bulk out of that area without being too aggressive. Now, we often hear the term personalising and so forth. A lot of the time we will apply the personalising uh, component of a haircut at the end. But if we're in this situation here where we want to personalise, you can come through once again. And instead of working traditionally, you can actually come through and just point with the texturising scissor. literally just nicking little pieces but it allows that to get super fine. So we'll come back around to the other side. And then I'm tapering away until I'm literally just running out of hair. Again, I'm moving towards the back of the ear, so I do have to be careful of moving blades. And watch it. Um, I think a lot of time people get paranoid that you're moving around the open point. You also have to be very, very aware that you don't pinch in behind. So once again, changing the angle of the comb. So I'm just working in reverse to what I did last time. So I'm actually working the butt of the comb up, keeping the end stationary, so I'm working that way. clearly sort of see there now how that's just forming a beautiful line. Once again, when it comes to the personalizing side of things, you can slide through and just do little sections like so, if you wish. And that will just take out any little bit of bulk. As the hair's starting to dry, you can actually start to see those areas. You can 
can see where they're bobbling up. Do you have any tips once again, Craig, for up and coming haircutters who are the fear of personalization gets them every time? Like, you know, this. Yeah, I think, um, you know, personalizing is one of those things that particularly if you're doing, you know, workshops or look and learns or you've got a senior that's talking to you and walking you through haircuts, a lot of the time you'll get, uh, you'll hear the term, you know, now's the time to be personalized. And a lot of the time people aren't really explaining what that component actually is. Personalizing is, for me, is when you just start to finesse a haircut. Um, so you are starting to now just really put that personal touch into it where you're finessing lumps out or you're removing a bit of excess bulk. Um, you are tidying up, you know, your lines or your hairlines. Um, also too, where you come through and you'll do a little bit of extra chipping. So I've got to use, come back in now to my sliding scissors, so my chipping scissors. So these are a lot sharper to my classic scissors. So it allows me to get in and work so I can actually slide through. So I'm gonna do a little bit of sliding for personalizing. You don't fully close the blade as such. You actually just sort of work through in little short movements. Now the trick to personalizing, I think if somebody sees the technique or sees their senior doing something like that, they go, oh cool, now I've got to do that through the whole section. No, you don't. So what we're looking for in anything here is any kind of inconsistencies or any little bumps and lumps. So, for example, as the hair's starting to dry, I've got sections here that are drying a little bit more than sections beside it. So that's going to read like I've left that a little bit heavier, a little bit bulkier. So you can actually roll through. I'm literally skimming small amounts of hair off. But allows that all of a sudden to sit a lot nicer, a lot tighter. Okay. So that's pretty much half the haircut done. It's our graduation done. Um, so it's got that really nice shape as we can see. Um, I'll just spin melt ever so slightly. Once, it, <coughs> once again, as you can sort of see with the line, our balance is there. So if we get to the 45, we can see off the occipital bone or the eye bone that we've got a beautiful feminine line happening. We've not over-rounded, we've kept the length into this area here which will allow our blend into the interior to be a lot easier leaving us hair through here so it's going to actually not flatten out so i'm going to drop a little bit of water on here just so we can start to work these next sections So I touched on before that the inspirations for the direction of this haircut was uh, Linda Evangelista. Uh, for those of you that are too young to know who Linda Evangelista is, she's one of the original supermodels uh, through the 80s and 90s. Um, she was really probably one of the forerunners when it came to, um, she sort of broke the mold in a lot of aspects because she very much transitioned and had lots of really short, fun haircuts. She played a lot of colour as well. A lot of her more famous looks um, were when she was actually blonde, very much similar to how Mel is today. And she would open her, her hair up and actually work back off the face. And she had quite a broken curl um, and fullness, quite random with the curl and the finishes. Uh, but what it did do is it opened the face up. And when it opens the face up, it promotes that femininity. It promotes beautiful jaw lines, promotes the angles and the features of the face and so forth. So uh, we will work with a little bit of that today. The second inspiration through there was pink. Pink is very much a modern version of sort of the Linda Evangelista um, sort of direction. The difference with what Pink was doing though, as opposed to Linda, Linda carried a little bit of length in her graduation inside, whereas Pink pulled that right out, so very much undercut. Both worked with disconnection. Disconnection is obviously a form and a technique that we're all very familiar with. We are seeing a lot of it. Um, so in the right application, it looks spectacular. Um, it can be done two ways. One, it can, to, it can be used to actually keep the haircut quite fashionable. Um, but we can also use it to remove bulk. So when someone's got a lot of hair and we actually want to just eliminate puffiness and so forth, um, then it's a great uh, option for a technique. 
once again, like I said, my main client base that I'm doing this type of haircut on is 35 and up. Um, so it allows them to have a little bit of fun with a, uh, with a short haircut, keeps them trendy, keeps them a little bit funky, gives the, uh, the girls something to talk about at coffee during the week when they get together. Not now though, I'm always busy at work, so. Doesn't have time for coffee. So, when we come through here now, if I actually comb this section out, so I'm actually now working off the O-bone, we'll actually see that there'll be quite a, a point of where my graduation stopped and now connecting into my interior part of the haircut. So here, once again, I'm working with vertical section and I will continue that line of the graduation. So I'm still gonna be working to a 45. That's ensuring that I keep this weight falling into this area. Same as the graduation, I will work with a mobile guideline. Because we're working with quite fine sections, um, you can, as you can sort of see the amount of hair that we're actually trimming off is quite light. Once again, it keeps us in control of the shape. Um, this is going to allow me to be able to work through quite comfortably and um, not have to sort of be putting too much focus and losing time and coming through and cross-checking. We have another question here, Craig. Yeah, far away. What face shapes or head shapes would you make the disconnection line higher rather than lower? Um, when it comes to that, I actually sort of gauge a lot of that actually on personality as much as I do actual face shapes. Um, once again, if we're working with um, face shapes that have like a diamond shape um, or a very sort of classic oval shape, certainly I'll come through and take that uh, reasonably high. A lot of the time it's not really face shapes, so I'm working on when it comes to that. It's a hair texture. Um, also too working with hair characteristics as well so in this case here I really try not to pop too high above a crest line in this case here we have just crept above it but because the graduation and the angle of that is working the actual bulk of that is actually sitting pretty much right on my crest line so as we can imagine the imaginary crest line rolls through the sides about an inch above the ear a hairdresser's inch and just drop it down so it falls just under the round of the o -bone or the occipital bone. Did I say occipital right? I think so, yeah. We'll go with that. We'll o go bone. with that. O-bone. O-bone. O -bone. O -bone. Now, as I come into the sides, but great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, I think in the early stages, particularly too, when we do work with um, um, face shapes and so forth, we can get a little lost sometimes in uh, talking about it. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing something like this on someone that's got quite a round face or quite a full face. Um, we're very lucky here in the perfect world that we are working with Mel. Um, that Mel's got beautiful cheekbones, she's got a great jawline, she's got great profile angles with uh, you know, proportions of the face and so forth. Lovely little ears, tanned, and so like I said, the sun's not out, so.
So Craig, how would you explain um, this type of sectioning pattern for people who are really used to having that kind of, say, pie sections or that really strict sectioning through mm -hmm. the top and pulling it from somewhere where you're kind of... Quite loose. Quite loose. Yeah. So um, That comes down to, I think, once again, confidence in what you're doing. Um, you will get times where people will overuse clips and so forth. I really <coughs> am not a huge clip user, even though I like to put them on my sleeve and look like a hairdresser. <laughs> um, obviously I'm using them a lot when I'm using longer lengths and so forth so what I'm doing to section up uh, but in this type of haircut very rarely will I use use clips there's my first drop of the day is one you prepared earlier? one I prepared earlier <laughs> I did tear the salon apart trying to find four or five of them so <laughs> Um, yeah, but what I'm working with here with to sort of answer that question a little bit better is, um, as you'll notice, the sectioning, I'm not getting too high into that internal interior part. So I'm literally only working with that next inch of hair. Um, it's just, as you can see, I'm starting to run out of hair. Um, by working in sort of more of a, a pie format, you'll actually have a point that you'll actually work at and you'll work around like in a pizza section yep. or a pie section and you'll stop then you've got to then work in connecting it so whether or not you work vertically through there or once again whether you work in a reverse pie into the fringe um, because this is disconnected i'm sort of working more vertically um, in one aspect you could say yes i'm following a pie section i will do that a little bit more as i work into the crown a great question there thank you I think a lot of the time we do in this format get a little bit scared to ask questions because we sort of think, oh, everyone else will know it and, you know, I'm going to look a little bit silly. I think whenever you're in a, a format like this or even in a live look and learn or workshop format, you know, the only question that you don't ask, you know, that's the silly question, so. Okay, here's our blend. Once again, as we come down through, we can actually see that we've got that variation running through. We've got a nice dramatic length left in the fringe, which will give us something to play with when we come to bring in the hair back up off her face. All right. I'm sitting down from her to start. So from here, I'm actually just going to get that whole fringe section out of the way. And to sort of address what Emma was talking about just a minute ago, We'll just work this in a little bit of a pie. There'll be a tiny little corner that we're going to take off through here. Uh, part of that will be because of we want to blend through with the haircut and because some of it with the, the bleaching, as the ends have gotten a little bit done, some of those ends are ready to come off. So here we'll sort of work with a section that's about half an inch in thickness to three quarters of an inch in thickness. And I'll come back down to where my graduation met that interior on the crest line. And I'll just bring that vertically away from the head and just blend in. At this point in time, I'm actually just sort of slowly starting to increase the length. And I just start to roll. I do have a previous cut point from that first section, so there's my guide. I'm literally through that. I've probably not worn the white coloured shirt for you guys to see this with the hair that we're cutting. You know, from the next class and I'll wear a black shirt. So then we'll come back through. So we've literally just worked in a pie section to a pie format, a section pattern to pretty much what would be the back of the ear. Then I'll repeat that on this side. Done. So we'll now start to work into the interior and the fringe part and the variation that we have running through here. So the way in which I'm going to actually work this is I'm going to take a section straight through the middle as my guide. Once again, this could be anywhere from a centimetre to 
like so half an inch thick and I'm literally just going to continue on the very first guideline section that I had running off the crown. I'm going to run this into a variation layer so it's going to be cut getting longer as we go forward. Key thing here is not to get too excited and take, take that crown section too short. Because uh, when you do come to the styling side of things, you want to be in a position where you can be in control of the hair or the driver's seat, as I often refer. If that's taken too short, that's going to be popping up and just waving at you, which becomes quite hard for the client to uh, recreate the style. Now I'm literally taking uh, a section right beside, so I'm actually just going to work down to a graduated line and what I'll do is actually have a mobile guideline in the middle, uh, sorry a stationary guideline in the middle and everything can get dragged up to that point. This allows you to catch up time during a haircut like this. So I've got the uh, stationary guideline through that middle section. Because I'm dragging this up to this first original middle section, um, it ensures that we keep the disconnection on the sides. Uh, but also allows us to be able to um, keep the, the variation layer strong and I'm not going to then be taking too much hair out of these side panels so from a front profile standpoint we're actually keeping it working quite well to my face shape so we're dragging up so we're keeping this length in here if we were to make this a mobile guideline we run the risk of actually rounding the shape out, which then when we go into the styling side of things, we lose that sort of front balance. Once again, it could be technically a perfect haircut, uh, but if you lose form, you lose your balance, the shape's not there, um, yeah, unfortunately the whole, the whole haircut's lost. I'm trying my best not to stick my tongue in. Is usually the time <laughs> Your mouth slightly open though. No, <laughs> Catching flies instead. Catching flies, yeah. So this in reality is done in about three sections. And if I want to cross-check myself at any point, we can then just come through and actually do a section straight across. Because we were working section originally from front to back. Now if we actually work from ear to ear, we can actually come through and take any section at any point and see where we're situated from a length standpoint and we're pretty good. But we'll bring that out the side to make sure we've got that little corner. That may be something in the personalising side of things where I might just chip and soften it out so we're not heavy weight to this point of two square. Uh, I just don't want to lose the length in that section. So you can come through to a point. This can be done at any section or any interval along that top section there. And you'll see where you're at. Now is that something, Craig, that you would prefer to do when it's slightly damp like this? Um, yeah, I can sort of just see to make sure that I've not sort of got you know, um, a heavy point or a guide or I've over dragged in some areas. Um, that just sort of comes from being right-handed, left-handed, uh, keeping your concentration through. Um, yeah, that natural to pull to yeah, one side. Yeah. Absolutely. We all have a strong side that we cut to and we all have a weak side. Um, and that's where personalising can come into play. Um, as you can sort of see here, I'm just automatically going into it, so I'm just defaulting into my personalising side of things here. Now, would you do this again once you've dried it off? I'll have a look at it, yeah. Um, but in the scheme of things, unless something's really popping at me and being very obvious that it's um, not right, then I will definitely come back through and reinvest once it's dry. I'm doing this still once again with my um, chipping scissors, my slide scissors, because uh, they are a lot sharper. So we can come in a little bit deeper. All right, at this point in time, this is pretty much really the uh, end of the cutting side of things. So um, we start to work into 
I'll start my way and I'll grind. So the products I'm going to use today. I'm a big fan. Um, I've worked with the Joyco brand for a lot of years now. I think we're getting into I think 18 or 19 years. Uh, one of the products that they got right back in the day, which I'm a massive fan of, I'm not sure if I'm learning because in the country to still use it, Emma laughs and whatnot, but I love Joy Lotion. The reason why I love it so much is that it is a water-based lotion. So it's not heavy in the hair, it's not bloggy and thick. How much are you putting in there? You're not shy, are you? No, I'm not shy. Um, primarily because I want to get this interior up. So I've used probably about the size of a 10 cent piece. I have been in a class once before and asked that question of somebody and they didn't say. I said about the size of a 15 cent piece. As you all know, 15 cent pieces don't exist. But is it a 10 and a 5? Yeah, bigger than a 10 and not as big as a 20. So I just did the logic. So you're really manipulating yeah. it through, yeah? We're working it through so we get it into the root area. Uh, once again, like I said, it's lightweight, um, water-based, so um, it doesn't give you a build-up in the hair. You don't have to shampoo it out. The second water gets on it, it starts to break the product down. Yeah. Just very casually sort of roll that onto the graduation because that component's going to look after itself. Most of the styling effort is going to come into this top section. So a lot of what I'm going to do here initially is I'll just go on to high speed, low heat, um, and I'm actually going to manipulate with my fingers to aerate out the root area and get it moving in the general direction. I will then actually come through and do, just do a little bit of fine tuning with an iron at the end. getting in and pinching with my fingers and just dragging, dragging everything up. So getting that root area and moving in an upper direction. There's no wrong or right when it comes to this. Um, it's primarily just to get that aeration into the root. Using my hands just in a general movement to allow the blend. And you start to see very much so through the graduated areas. And letting the hair dry do most of the work. can sometimes be used as a negative or viewed as a negative thing. In this case, it's going to be a positive thing. <laughs> it's going to give us lots of body. Lots and lots of body. This is not a, uh, this is a haircut that Mel wears every day. This is her daily. Um, this is not a new haircut for her, so she knows how to roll this. As you can see, Mel's hair's already got a little bit of movement coming into it, which is something that we'll play with. I'm doing working with some pretty fine graduation. Sometimes I'll actually use the cutting comb in the drying process just to get the direction of the hair moving. This is great 
great if you're actually working and doing graduated haircuts on mannequin heads to allow the hair to actually get down quite tight. Here's my ASMR. The nozzle will pick up a fair bit of heat, so you can actually follow the nozzle against the hair to actually help flatten and straighten the hair. So, if you wanted to, you can get in. So pretty much any tool can work in this format. So you pretty much get the hair pretty much dried out the way I want it. You've got the root area with a lot of lifts. Now it's really just sort of going to come down to a little bit of personalising. The final little bit of personalising I'm going to do is just with an iron. Um, but as we can sort of see, a tremendous amount of height. We can play with this. This is very much something that we could just, you know, sit down and take photos with straight away. To help us out now at this point in time for a little bit of texture, literally one of my favourite products at the moment, which is the dry shampoo. Weekend hair, love it. Can't overdo it. Remembering that I'm a hairdressing baby of the 80s, so we'll dig into product. So, we have stuff that you can work with and manipulate, which still allows me to put a, a hot tool on, i.e. an iron. Um, yeah, we almost use it like a, a light hairspray cross texturizer. Yeah, cross. it's a working it's... spray, very much. So I'm literally just going to grab in quite sort of random sections here with the irons. I want to put a full turn on it, but so, so we're going to take a little bit of a V section. Once again, I'm not getting clips involved here. I want the client to be able to see that this is something simple that they can do themselves. It can be quite sort of random. I'm not starting right from the root area either because we've just got to put all that aeration in there. So I'm starting about a third of the way up the length because I want to keep that lift there. If we were to drop the iron in lower, we're actually just going to start to uh, go against what we were, um, what we've just done with the blow dry. And I think sometimes we actually see that a little bit. We overwork the hair with the styling tools, um, which then can actually just defeat a lot of what we've just done with the blow dry standpoint. That's the extent of my iron work. What I'm going to do now, just the final product to play with, is literally just the color therapy luster lock oil. Um, so we've done one and a half pumps, just enough to get a little bit of a glisten, and a little bit of layering on my hands. Nice and glossy. Lovely. All I'm doing now is just going to work it through in just like a little bit more of a sort of a scrunching format through here. Now this can be dragged if you want to bring stuff down around the face area, uh, or if you want to keep it coming away from the face. At this point in time, I'll just play and see what works. Sometimes I might drag it right down, so I go, oh, I'm liking how that's going. Um, I might drag and just tilt it back. So I feel that that's working for me. And now, just with the residue that's left on my hands, we're just actually sort of getting in now and just ever so slightly finishing off. So guys, there we have it. We have our punk rock chameleon pixie haircut. Uh, Craig and I will take some photos as well um, and write a few tips and tricks and pop it on the page just as a follow up. And thank you to Mel, <laughs> who's now rocking her <laughs> do, punk rock do. Yeah, awesome. <laughs>
Right. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you picked something up out of this and um, that it's been knowledgeable and um, maybe this is just adding another feather into your bow of your repertoire or your bag of tricks if you like to refer to it like that. So, um, I'm Brock Chameleon. Yeah, thank you. And Craig and I will see you in a... Craig and I will see everybody in a couple of weeks for... What are we doing? I'm not sure what the next one is. It's a bob. It's we'll see bob. you then. <laughs> Ciao.